this is Victor. I'm here with a second part of the painting tutorial of the Vermin Lord. Uh, in the first part, I did the skin. The skin is, uh, from my point of view, is finished. And in this second part, we are going to do the armor and the fur. And I will try to put it in a position that I can start glue it. I can glue this on the base. I want to paint the tail and other details before gluing it to the base. So. Let's see, because it's going to be one of the last steps, maybe, to glue it to the base. So let's work a little bit more on the armor at this point. And I'm going to do a second wash on the armor. Remember, the armor was painted with has not, has not um, um, Cooper, a wash of Agvax Air Shade. And now I'm going to apply Coelia Green Shade, okay? I'm going to apply a green shade. Uh, to give this sensation of more uh, rusted, uh, to give this sensation of magical green as well, that the scavens uh, uh, is matching very well with the scaven look on my, from my point of view. Okay, uh, it will look very green at the beginning, but you will see once it's applied, uh, it will also uh, have a very nice touch on this uh, Cooper um, armor. Okay, so we are going to apply this on all the armor parts. And you see, you start, you can start seeing that I think it will look very nice. Okay, it's something that I. Uh, when we do the four, uh, yeah, these are the main parts. Uh, I have to say that this is Cabin Lord does not have uh, have a lot of details, but does not have too much difference in too many elements with different colors. Okay. And I like it that because then it forces you to work a lot on the skin and to have a very nice skin shading. So it's key to work a lot on these three elements that this military mainly have that is skin, fur, and these armor plates. Okay, and then they have some details like the bowl, the orb, and other things. But I will say that these are the main elements that you have to focus. So I will apply this on all the different armor plates as you can see. And I show you, I, I, I'm back once this is done. So while the green wash we have done is drying, we are going to work a little bit on the glaive. And here I will go for something that is brighter. So I will use uh, Auric Armor Gold. Sorry, I do, no, Retributor Armor. Okay, and I will put this on these spikes here. Okay, so this one I will go more with the brass color. We are going to do as well the dark wash and the green wash to give this a sensation of to give this green tint to the metallics on them. But I will keep it brighter than the armor, and the reason for that is I want them to contrast more uh, against the brown of the of the leathery part that we are going to do there. Okay, so I will apply here, and I will do as well this part of the weapon. Okay, not the blade and not the spike, just this decoration on the weapon. Okay, so I do this on retributor armor, and I'm coming back. You can see here this is how the metallic looks like, quite dark and greenish. And now I'm going to do another wash. I will wash here on the cloth and I will use uh, the case Seraphine Sepia. I want to give a um, darker color, browner. So I want to just put a little bit of Seraphine Sepia to give this color. Uh, again, here we have to be very careful because the, the the texture is not that big or it's not that that sharp it's more organic shape so when you have this type of texture you want to be more careful with the washes but anyway you will see especially in this big flat area we are going just to apply the wash to darken all the color and then from there we will need to highlight carefully um, yeah you have to be careful not to stain as well and just if the back is more interesting, there is these lines that you want also, or these folds that you want to show to pop up. So I do it here. Ok, 
okay and we we know that this device and we can start working on the highlights on this part and also doing some details that are in this area like these things these ornaments here that are hanging from the this type of armor belt okay so just be careful that you don't forget any of the you don't forget the edges but everything thing is evenly covered I will leave it like that and I will do this right before doing the next step so this hole looks like the tabard okay but while I'm working on the tabard I will do first here a wash on the clave uh, I will apply um, Iglex Air Shade as a shade on the brown part, okay? So we are going to do that. So I can have also this prepared for when I want to assemble them. I want to assemble it together with the rest of the, of the miniature, okay? So this is not quite straightforward we just apply this and I will be careful to apply it only on the brown parts the gold I will go for a different gouache and that it will give uh, for me nice uh, nicer looking okay so we go there here be careful that you do all around okay and the last part okay I will wait that this dries here I will let it dry this way I prefer to jump to have two pieces at the same time so when I do the washes I can uh, leave one part dry while I'm working on the other part okay I will put to keep to to make it this to stand up I just apply a clamp and then I can Okay. So next step, I'm going to work on the tabard. To do that, I will use again Raker uh, um, no Raker, Raker flesh. Okay. And we are going to highlight this. We want to give this uh, tonality that is a little bit. <clears throat> dirty okay so we are going to go like that we are going to apply this this part We are going to use to smooth the transition. We can use a little bit of Valor Brown, okay? Mix it with it. Or we can even use, oh, I will use Valor Brown, it's better. I was trying to think about it's a little bit yellowish, but it will give a nice tone, okay? to work to highlight the tabard and have a nice color transition okay take a little bit of black and flesh remember that the base color was black and flesh but as, as soon as we do the the wash with uh, seraphine sepia Tucker flesh have changed now it's to a really uh, aqua color. Okay. This is how I like to work. I like to low work using the the washes to give us a very nice guide and where to highlight and also giving this nice 
tones that are a mixture of two different tonalities. Okay. I'm going to play, I'll play this one here as well. Put a little bit of black or fresh here. sensation of dirty cloth. Okay, I'm going to apply here. the back okay so I will do the back as I did the front and the back is going to be more difficult to show in camera because it's a little bit hidden but the principle is going to be very similar a little bit of that case because we have quite a dark brown we can use a little bit of um, we can use more from brown to help on the darkest parts especially the shade at the very in No, we look very stark, but we're going to smooth this. Okay. That. No, I'm going to use the barrel brown. Let mix it a little bit here. two tonalities then we're going to use Rakar Flesh to have the high, higher highlights if we think that the brown, this brown is too dark we can make a mixture with barrel brown okay and then we smooth we make this brown much lighter okay as you can see now we leave a very nice Shading and will help us to transition to the rocker place that they want to put at the end of the highlight. Okay. As you can see, I try to avoid that the paints are completely dragging on the middle so we can mix them. there and make a little bit of white blending can put as well a little bit of brown on the front if we want then we'll put the mixture just to make this part darker this is too white a little bit more, more from brown Brown, 
Yes. The base of these two is dark. Take battle brown, and I smooth mixes battle brown mixed with. Okay, I can use it this as well. No, I will use thin bottle brown try to make this smoother so we'll take a little bit of mixture. This part is uh, not very it's not very deep, so you want to keep it quite smooth so I'm having just a little, a little bit of more from brown so until I have this tonality here. Okay, you can do the same on this pad. Not a little bit of more from brown here so I can make this darker. And now I will use just a little bit of Rakar Flesh to give this more extreme highlight so we have this nice finish. If we see that it's too much, we we'll glaze it a little bit with, with the Valor Brown and we just keep the record flesh on the most superficial parts, okay? And you work on that until you're happy. So I think this one is looking no good. So I will do the back of camera and I come back once I finish on the back. Next step, I'm going to work on the armor. And I'm going to trim uh, with uh, Auric Armor Vault, okay? Uh, I was thinking if I do it with that, or I use again the Hasnut Cooper thing, I will use Auric Armor Vault. Okay, always check in what I think it's going to be. And what we are going to do is we are going to do the trim. We have to be careful not to do them because they have some the border of the armor okay we are going to do this small spikes has here and we are going to do as well these things that are joining the armor plates okay This is where I'm going to focus first. Then I will look how it looks like and we'll check if we are going to do the armor plates itself. But at this moment I will focus on just doing... I will not do the symbols because I want to do them in green. So I will just focus on this... on the edge of the armor and on all these things. And once it's done we are going to make a look how looks like and to do that you can see it's just a matter of passion and precision one tricky one trick here uh, go with the brush sideways and it's going to be very easy to pick up to pick these things okay you see sideways 
and here on, on the border I'm going to do the same okay and here we see that this, this is the equation inside so we are going to do as well try not to go into the full and very important not to touch the skin by any means Okay, so be careful when you do here the inside of the neck, of the armor neck. Okay, so you can see there is not much to say here, and it's going to be boring to, to see how I do the full armor. So. Uh, I will do the rest of the armor as you can see here at the front and I come back once this is done. Okay. You see now who looks like, I think it looks much better. And now I'm going to use has not uh, copper again to do some highlights on the panels. Okay, here I want to be very careful because we have this green touch and the copper is very brown. But I think we'll, we'll have a very nice uh, we'll, we'll add a lot on the on on the armor plate. Okay, so I'm going to work like that. Okay. And you want to go with not too much paint and just add a little okay, to I think here you see what I mean. Okay, the interesting part for example is going to be this uh, armor that it's have a very curious design that I find very interesting that is all like triangles making hexagons. Okay. So I'm going to do like that. You have to be very careful not to touch the things that we already highlight. And I want to do this in purpose because you see it's going to give a very nice bright very nice contrast with the green and will make the armor really interesting the trick is a little bit go try to go very soft try to have not too much paint on the brush and apply very little okay here we have another big hexagon made of triangles okay this to this um, the step has to be quite soft and just to give or to add more life to this armor to give some bright points and to make it more interesting so I will keep doing that on all the different you can see that all the armor plates are triangles connected between them Okay. I will keep doing that on all the armor plates and I come back once it's done. So what I will do next on the Vermin Lord is going to be this, the talons. Okay. 
we'll paint them dark grey, almost black. And then with that, and I will do this, we can glue it on the base because it's going to be much easier then to paint the fur without touching it. So to do that, I will start with ashen grey. Okay, and we are going to paint this very dark grey as a side. Okay, I want to start gluing on the base this thing because I am rubbing off the paint with my fingers, especially on the hair. So before working on the hair, I, I want it to be uh, put on the base. Okay, now here we have to be careful, we don't dirty the, the skin we painted before. Okay, so I will do this leg, and then I will do the other uh, foot off camera because uh, it makes no sense to repeat both on camera. Okay, because I want to, as you can see, I'm playing the base of ashen grey on over the, these nails or talons or whole hoops. I don't know how to call this, it's like hoops with talons, well let's call it talons ok, here we have now we are going to go for a lighter grey so I'm going to take downstone to apply it this part this part Something like that. in there okay. the intention is to leave the tip of the talon lighter in color Finally, I'm going to use administratum grey that is even lighter to the very end of the tip. to mix with downstone grey to smooth a little bit transitions Something like that. Now we take the down 
old stone, and we put it here. And with administrator gray. Wait, I draw it on the deep. Okay, we do the same on the other side. Have you had the feeling that you are not moving? The pain is mixing too much. Wait a little bit, let it dry and come back. We want to keep the lighter gray on the edges. Keeping the flatter parts darker. Here is two. And to put a darker gray. Okay, the, the, the difficult part may be the inside of the nails. So I will let it dry now, and I come back to the next step. While the paint of the nail is drying, we are going to start working on that to prepare the base. Because I want to glue, as I said, the Vermin Lord to this part here on the base. This was pre-glued, and so I will do this, and take into account that I will do the rest of the base when I have glued the guy, because I want to put some texture, but I need to go where the feet goes before putting the texture. So, let's work on that. And I'm going to first apply uh, dry yet. I'm going to go for a dark color of the, the ground. So I'm going to apply um, dry, dry yet bark here. Okay, you can do it with a very thick brush, as you can see here, and we can go fast. You have the the, the way it's already done. Uh, you can do that later. I want to do this because I want to void that I can dirtan the vermin lord when it's glued by accident okay but i want to have a good joint so i will glue it directly on the base and then i will add the texture around that and in the way i want to give the sensation of moving okay on all the base and then add some rocks in a muddy uh, uh, space right so we have done that and now i'm going to paint what is here these stones and I will use uh, mid-tone grey so it's going to be stone burning full you can use as well when we have a scaven blight dinger or any but I like this one a lot for to make stones and we are going to play it as you can see have the okay so I'm going to do that and I will wait that this device. So I do that, I wait that this device, and I come back. Okay, once we have the, the grays dry, we are going to take no non oil gloss and we are going to apply this on the nail. I want to give this glossiness on the nail, and I think this, in that case, the gloss uh, wash will help to do that. Let's see. It's a little bit of experimenting from my side. But I think we'll give this darkness that we need. Okay, I want to, to go darker with the uh, the nails, the talons, and I want to go a little bit glossy. Okay, so I think with this I can do both things at the same time. I'm not very fan of these gloss varnishes for metal. I don't think they do the job they should do. They look more wet. On metallics, they make more looking wet than really enhancing. Uh, it's not something that I'm not fan. But I like to use these gloss varnishes to make this type of effects. So I give I, I give a different use than the original purpose of these gloss varnishes. So uh, as I said, I like to experiment a lot with the new with every type of paint. And I like to find different ways. Also to shortcut and uh, work from time to time, using technical paints and all this type of uh, 
tools that the different companies are putting out there. Okay, now I keep this like that. Okay, we have here the nails painted. Uh, I will let it dry. I will not touch while it's drying. But I come back to show you how it looks like what have dried. This is how the nails look like now. Okay, you see it darker. We have a little bit of um, glowing, but I, I like it how it looks like. Okay, and uh, now the contrast is much better. And I will be like that. So now I will paint this uh, thing that is hanging there. I will use dry bark for the this type of uh, strings or leather things. I don't know how to call it. I will paint like if they are leather. And I will apply first uh, dried bark okay, on this part to go down. And yeah, here you have to be careful not to do it on all the job we already did in all this zone of the miniature. So I took a good thin brush to be able to be precise. Okay, and we just apply this there. Okay, I will do the other side and I come back once it's done. Okay, next step we are going to keep working on this. As we are waiting that the other paint with it is drying. Uh, I'm going to apply now a dry, dry brush of lacquer flesh on the stones. Okay, I will have a high contrast. As you can see, I'm using one of these makeup brushes. To do this, uh, this dry brush, we can do, go quite heavy and have. Okay, because now we are going, then we will work with washes. As you can see, like our flesh is a very nice color to the dry brush stones and rocks as well okay try to move out of the typical gray some from time to time and you will see that is you can also have very nice colors with other st bones colors if you want to go for more pale rocks okay so you see that we are having quite a nice contrast now I'm going to apply a little bit more, I will incisate a little bit more. I'm going to bleach a little bit more of these stones. Okay. Remember here we have a rat that I paint like a stone, we need to pick up the rats later on. Okay. But before doing the rats, the next thing, like this. the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take no brown, okay, and I will take quite a light brown. So, for example, we can use this crack brown. Oop, I almost lost the ball. Apply this around the base okay, because I want to give the, the intention is because I want to give. I know that I will do a brush list later on, but I want to give this brown dust effect at the base of the stones, and we are going to do the same here. See, I don't to give this effect there. Okay, I'm going to do it there. This is why I leave the rats for the last step. This is more than enough at this stage to wash this little bit. 
better. Uh, next step, I'm going to use Agrax Air Shade, and we are going to wash everything. For that, I use as uh, we have a big brush in that stage. Okay, we can go. I will have to. Here is not that bad. It pulls a little bit. Uh, try. Here we want really this. Okay. You can have. Well, I will not let it pull too much, neither. Prefer that is if it's pulling, it's at the base, basically. But the gravity will do part of the work as well. Okay, but I want to give this tone that is now much darker. Okay, uh, now we have to wait that this dries. Okay, and while this is drying, we can go back to the main body. Okay, let's go here. See, I want to stop this part when I glue both parts together, but if I see that it's too long. I may wait a little bit, or maybe I can do the rats when everything is good. Now let's see. This, I don't want to make the parts too, too long. So now I'm going to take Auric Armor Gold, and I'm going to do these small ornaments or medals that he has in this position here, right? This, like, uh, scaven symbols, so... Who knows what is this? Only the Vermin Lord know what is this for or what is the meaning of these things. So what we are going to paint this gold. Then we are going to wash it so to make it look more scaling. Okay. You can if you don't like auric armor gold because you think it's too bright, you can always use red bit of armor. It's just because I wanted to change a little bit. Okay, and again, here we need to wait at this device. So what this is drying, we can... Because I, I like to keep working on the miniature. So this is one thing, one thing I will always give to you. Try to work in two parts of the miniature at the same time when it's a big one. So in that way you don't need to stop waiting for the drying. So we can work uh, I wanted to make this symbol and this symbol on green on the armor. So we can go for a green now. We'll start with Warstone Glow. Okay, this is. Shake it well. And we do these two symbols. And when we do this type of um, ornaments, go with the brush almost horizontal almost parallel to the surface, apply very little pressure and let the, the scope work for you. It's too thin this one, I need to have one that they went to the place that I don't want it. Okay, let's do it, now it's better. Okay, we do as well the one here. Okay. Okay. Need to wait a little bit. Okay. Right. No, we can use, I will only make these ones green bright. I'm going to use no mood green to make this pop up a little bit more.
that. And now like that. Sorry. And if you want, you can use a little bit of yellow to even make it brighter. I'm going to use Fleischgeist yellow, so use the most bright yellow of Game to Workshop. I'm going to put it here, here, and here. But the trick here is the yellow is going to be too obvious, so now I take mood green. And I go over. But I find it, I like it more in the past how Scorpio Wing was looking like. Okay, we are going to do this, this, and this, for example. You don't need to put it everywhere. And now with Moon Green again, we do. Okay. If a little bit goes out, what happened to me in one of the sides? With very, with a lot of care, I will take a little bit of dried bark. Okay, you take a very deep brown. Then with the brush, you remove the paint that was there if it's needed. Okay, and now with dried bark. I will go next to it and make a very deep shade, very thin, okay, to help me to enhance the symbols, and that's all. Okay. Okay. While this part is drying, we are going to work on the orb, and I'm going to apply uh, incubi, uh, so um, incubi darkness. It is a very, very deep green, almost greenish. Okay, but this is going to. I, I want. I'm going to start with this color. Then we are going to do this lots. We need, will need to clean. It's going to be quite a bit of work on this orb, but this is white is one of the most important parts of the miniature together with the head. Okay, so we are going to do, do with this very careful, not to go over the skin that we have done. This is why I have not done the nails yet. Okay, I'm going to apply here a base color of Incubi Darkness and I come back for the next step. This is how the orb looks like, and now I'm going to do a wash on with Rayclan Flea uh, Shade on these um, ornaments of the of the Vermin Lord. Okay. So we just take a little bit of we put it in here. Okay, we do it like that on one side and we do the other side. As you can see I want to glue it because you can see that the paint is being chipped off from the hairy part. So uh, now I will wait at this device. I'm also waiting that the base is dry because I want now to finalize the part on the base and glue it now uh, on the base. Okay, so I waited everything dries and I'm back. Okay, this hole looks like at this stage. Okay, we have here all the washers dry and you see that this is looking quite nice and interesting. And now we, we have to know that this goes assembled somewhere like that, okay? We have these small rats there, so I will need to paint these rats and also we will need to do the tail before gluing that. Okay, but I will do this in the next tutorial, so you see this is the more or less how this thing will go together, okay? We have this rat there in the middle. So we need to uh, finalize this painting job of the rats and I will need to do the tail before gluing as well. So I, uh, I will stop the video here, okay? And in the second part, we are going to focus on the tail, how to do the tail, and how to do to prepare the base to glue everything together. Okay, so I hope you have liked this video. I want to stop here to help facilitate 
the editing. Uh, if you want to support my video, you can give a like. You can subscribe if you want to see more about the paint job of this guy. And uh, you can also support me uh, in my merchandise shop that you can find the link in the description below or you can support me by Patreon. Uh, that's all for now. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please give a like if that is the case. And as usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!